The graphic that you and I are witnessing off to my right is basically a brief graphical explanation in reference to red dye number 40 and yellow 6. Both FDA approved food dyes, obviously for the food, use in food, medicines, vitamins, and so on and so forth in the United States. Also approved to the EU, even though it's the European Union, they have to label that these dyes are included. But I want you to keep one thing in mind. We're looking at an animal model here. And although FDA red number 40 and yellow 6 were approved safe for human use by the FDA, in healthy individuals, or at least healthy animals, nothing seems to transpose or occur. But once there is a dysregulation in the immune system reference to cytokine interleukin-23, then all havoc breaks loose, including the animal model here. When they, gave, when they fed red dye number 40, yellow number 6, the animals with normal immune systems or healthy immune systems, everything was intact. You'd probably approve the food dyes without a problem saying uh, there's no adverse reactions. However, though, once the introduction of dysregulation, a cytokine interleukin-23 uh, occurred, that's where we're going to delve into the research because it's really, really vital for individuals because it doesn't have to be like your immune system may not be intact all the time. So when these dyes are consumed, potentially, if this is the same in the human model as the animal models, and that window of opportunity proceeds in reference to the consumption of these food dyes, buyer beware. But to proceed as follows. Food dyes may cause disease when the immune system is dysregulated, research report. Artificial food colorants can cause disease when the immune system has become dysregulated. The study published in Cell Metabolism in May was the first to show this phenomenon. The study conducted in mice, remember this has to be conducted in humans as well, prior to observation first, uh, I don't think it would be ethical to uh, induce colitis or inflammatory bowel disease in a person just for the sake of studying, but to proceed, found that the mice developed colitis when they consumed food with artificial food colorants FDNC red 40 and yellow 6. When a specific component of their immune system known as cytokine interleukin-23 was dysregulated. While it remains unclear whether food colorants have similar effects in humans, researchers plan to investigate exactly how cytokine interleukin-23 promotes the development of colitis after food colorant exposure. And this is where it gets real interesting because even though they can dysregulate cytokine, uh, cytokine interleukin-23 in the animals, they did not develop inflammatory bowel disease until after yeah, the catalyst was introduced, red dye number 40, yellow number 6. To proceed, colitis is a form of inflammatory bowel disease and cytokine interleukin-23 dysregulation is known as a factor in the development of IBD in humans. Medicines that block its function are now successfully used in patients. Food colorants such as red 40 and yellow 6 are widely used in food, drink, and medicine. These two food colorants are the most commonly used in the world. Proceed. For the study, the researchers created mouse models that had dysregulated expression of cy cytokine interleukin-23. To their surprise, the mice with a dysregulated immune system did not develop, reiterate that, did not develop inflammatory bowel disease spontaneously, even though dysregulated interleukin-23 is a factor in people with disease. Now, the introduction of the catalyst. When given a diet with food dyes red 40 and yellow 6, the altered mice developed colitis. However, the mice that had the dye-infused diet but had a normal immune system did not develop IBD. To prove that the food colorant was indeed responsible, the researchers fed the altered mice diets without the food colorant and water containing it. In both cases, the disease developed when the mice consumed the colorant but not otherwise. They repeated this finding for several diets and several food colorants. To conclude, the dramatic changes in the concentration of air and water pollutants and the increased use, I'm quoting the researchers, and increased use of processed foods and food additives in the human diet in the last century correlate, remember correlate's not causation, but correlation, with the increase in the incidence of inflammatory and autoimmune diseases. To proceed forward, 
These environmental changes are thought to contribute to the development of these diseases, but relatively little is known about how they do so. Quoting the researchers, we hope this research is a step toward understanding the impact of food colorants on human health. Again, this is a big step forward in recognizing this phenomenon. Now, what I want to do is have the link to the abstract itself. The full study is not available for a public view as, as of yet, but still just the same. A few more highlights from the abstract regardless, but it's important. Now, a lot of questions will be out there uh, in reference to, well, what happens in the animals that had IBD and colitis when the food colorants were withdrawn? Did the IBD or colitis uh, go into remission? That's for future research. I'd love to have an answer for you for that, but I don't know. I hope it does. And it's for individuals that have IBD and colitis, maybe it may not be a bad idea from a personal experience standpoint, at least observational, if they begin to remove these food colorants from their diet to see if their symptoms improve, even though they could have cytokine interleukin-23 still dysregulated, if you remove these catalysts, do things get better for the individual? I would love and love to see. Real brief study, real brief review, but it has profound impact and is extremely, extremely important to many, many people, adults and as well as children, still just the same. Again, links will be there for you to follow. Gratitude, gratitude always to the researchers for looking at the research here and exp uh, expressing that and publishing it for the public to purview. Again, and for peer review as well. Always humble and humbled by the great research conducted by many, many of these institutions. But regardless, thank you, gratitude to you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you all once again next week. See you next time. Bye.